Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, so after years of uh, riding around in the car with that stereo, I decided to upgrade to an aftermarket stereo. Uh, I got a Kenwood aftermarket doubled in. Uh, so this stereo had, of course, the Bose uh, sound system. It had backup camera, uh, Bluetooth capability, uh, Sirius XM, satellite radio, the iPod control through the USB. Uh, so it's a factory, standard factory radio that you would get on like the S model and SL model, stuff like that and of a Nissan Altima. It's a 2012. Uh, and of course the digital climate control, you can tell because of the shape of this hole right here. <clears throat> so I wanted to sw swap it out. But I wanted to retain all of the uh, good stuff that comes along with it, like the steering wheel controls and stuff like that, that I was used to with this radio. Uh, the Kenwood that I got, uh, you can get all that stuff with it, but it requires uh, wiring up a bunch of interfaces, which uh, that looks like a total shitty mess, but whatever. Uh, there's the radio it's in. I got to put in everything. <clears throat> so I'm going to run through it. Uh, uh, as I try to stay on, you know, on task here and <laughs> try to make some sense out of what's going on here. Cause I looked on the internet, there was not a whole lot of videos out there on how to wire up this particular model. Um, let me show you the back of this factory radio. <clears throat> this was the back of the factory radio. So you have your USB, uh, input, uh, it's a wire that controls the USB plug or connects to the USB plug that's in the center console in the glove box there, which I'm not going to open that because there's a, a holy mess in there that, uh, yeah, so <clears throat> USB, this is your main power for your radio, uh, also handles your steering wheel controls are also integrated into that one. This one here is for your backup camera. Uh, this one's your antennas, uh, your regular conventional uh, terrestrial antenna and a satellite radio antenna also go into there. Uh, this one is for the Bose amp power. Uh, I, I, this thing does some other stuff too because there's a ton of wires, but uh, the main thing that you need to get from this is this is where the power is coming out of your, uh, for your Bose antenna, and this is where the speakers uh, outputs go. So they run out of here to the Bose amp. This runs out of here to the amp. They all come together in one cannon plug back there in the amp. And it goes into the amp. The amp does whatever the hell it does with it. Pushes it back out to all your speakers. So instead of having to wire your speakers individually and bring them back up here to your deck, you can get an interface, which is this guy right here. These four RCA plugs. Uh, this is the backup camera. We'll plug that real quick. Uh, so this is uh, right side front red right side front left side front is white uh, right side rear is violet uh, left side rear is green it all comes down into this plug right here now this plug will correspond with that plug this plug is not used that's this one right here so you're not even gonna need to use this one so this guy can go back here and into a deep dark hole and I don't give a shit what happens to it from there on out. Bye. See you later because you're a pain in my ass. So this is going to give you your amp. Now, in addition to this, to get the sound out of your speakers, because you plug this in and then you got no sound from your speakers, so you're going to be banging your head against the wall because you're going to be pissed, right? So in, order, in, 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 in addition to this plug and this harness here, when you order this one off, uh, off the line, I'll put the... Um, part number in, in the description you will also get this harness here and it's just this piece here it has four wires coming out well oh, damn where did I learn how to count yeah four wires coming out of it <laughs> I did some funky shit uh, you're gonna have a yellow uh, a yellow wire that's your accessory wire this blue white wire that's gonna be for your amp so you need that wire this orange wire, I just looped it around and shoved it back in there. That's the illumination. You don't need it. Your red wire is your battery vehicle power. And then you have, you won't have, you'll have to create this black wire for your ground. 
Uh, now you can ground it to the vehicle chassis, but whatever. I figured it was easier to do it that way, so I did it that way. Anyway, back to the Bose amp. This is going to plug in to give you your sound. Now, in order to get the amp to function, the amp to turn on and start giving you sound, you need to come to this plug that they give you, take this blue white wire, run it around. I had to splice it into another wire because it was too short, but run it to this wire on the Kenwood harness right here. This wire that says P, uh, whatever, continuous. That is your power amp. That's going to switch your amp on. It also says antenna connection on the other side, but whatever. Uh, you don't really need to power your antenna. You can if you want. I spliced them both in just for the hell of it. But um, make sure that you run a wire, the blue-white wire, from this harness to this connection point right here on the Kenwood uh plug right there the factor the plug that's going to come with it make sure you plug it in there that way it'll give your power amp the power uh then you got the speakers you get speakers you got the power you get the music all right now that i've totally probably confused you with that i'm going to move on to the backup camera uh, i wanted to retain my backup camera uh so what i had to do was again buy another freaking harness which is this harness right here this guy the big one and it's gonna have these wires sticking out of there's two more wires that I cut off because you don't need them uh, but again it's it's accessory and constant power and a ground right so uh, all of that can be plugged in together with this harness you know you got the same thing here yellow red black yellow red black plug it all into the same thing uh, you got the same thing going on with your steering wheel controls which I'll get to in a minute but plug it all into the same splice it all together it makes it a little bit neater a little bit more uh, a little bit less crap floating around that you have to plug in um, now this is gonna have everything you need right so what it also comes with is this guy right here it is a 6 volt 12 volt to 6 volt converter and it has three wires coming out of it, which I've taped all this up, which I probably should have filmed this before I taped it all up, but whatever. There's three wires coming out of it. So it'll tell you where to plug all these wires in, but basically what you want to make sure of is that you get the blue-white wire that's coming out and the green wire coming out of the harness going to your reverse switch wire on your radio. Now that's going to tell the car, tell, tell the radio that the car is in reverse and that you need to turn the camera on. So it'll, cam it'll, it'll, it'll trigger the camera without you having to push any buttons. It'll, it'll automatically trigger it as soon as you put it in reverse. Uh, the other wire that comes out is a red-blue wire which connects to power. To the red wire that's coming out of there. And this harness, I'll put the, the link in the description for that one as well. Uh, it, it, it's wiring diagram is pretty straightforward and uh, if you follow the wiring diagram you can't screw it up and and it'll work great and then of course this is carrying your video it goes into video uh, our cams a uh, reverse cam Bow, right there so now you got camera for your uh, you got a backup camera hooked up so we did Bose amp reverse camera um, also, this thing has a DVD player in it, and it's going to want to, you're going to want to play DVDs whenever. You're not going to want to have to wait until the car is in park. So this thing comes with a park switch. So this wire right here comes with this wire, this extension wire, which is about six feet long. Uh, it's supposed to go to your park switch. Uh, so the car knows that you're in park. So, you know, you're not watching videos while you're driving around, which is, uh, dangerous. So what you need to do if you want to bypass that and just watch videos whenever is just take this wire, plug it in. I had to splice it because I screwed up, but whatever, uh, plug it in and then run it to a ground right back there. Just ground that bad boy right there. Now the radio thinks that the car is in park all the time. So you can watch videos whenever your heart desires you don't have to necessarily put the car in park all right so that handles your park switch 
we did the reverse camera we did the park switch now we're going to move over here to this guy steering wheel remote input and this one's one that kind of gave me some some crap or it was really that was the one that was really pissing me off uh so what it is is you got this blue yellow wire that comes out of the radio and the blue yellow wire will continue on and go to your steering wheel interface you have to buy a steering wheel control interface so what i bought was steering wheel interface control pro 2 from pack it's a great little product uh works plug and play on most vehicles but unfortunately on a nissan it's not plug and play uh normally you would set these dip switches it comes with an app uh, you download the app, it tells you where to set the switches, where to set these switches for your radio, and then tells you where to wire everything to, and then boom, you're done. All right? well, I wired everything up and did all that, and it still didn't work. So, what I ended up doing was, for a Nissan, apparently, you have to set all of the dip switches on the left to off. You set your dip switches on the right to whichever radio configuration you have. There's a... a, a, a um, instructions that come with this guy and they'll tell you what to set these on the right so it's compatible with your radio that's the setup for a Kenwood two down two up all the rest of them I set to off then what I did is I had to manually program it the instructions also come with a procedure for manually programming this particular guy right here and what you have to do is you plug it in you make sure you got power and everything you'll get a light right there then you use your reset button, you hold your reset button in to, uh, till you see the thing flash green. Once it flashes green, then you have to go through the procedure of which button it tells you to push. And it'll tell you the orders, like volume, button, and then and then you push the, the uh, minus volume button, track up, track down, source. It tells you exactly what to push, when to push it. So once it's in program mode, it'll go green, you'll push a button, it'll turn red, and then it'll turn green as soon as it knows that that button is programmed. Uh, if it has a selection for something like mute, and you don't have a mute button on your steering wheel, you just hit this, mash this button again, right there, and it'll flash one time green, and it'll let you know it moved on to the next one, so it's not programming anything there. But uh, pretty pretty easy once I figured that out to get it to work, I just had to figure that shit out. But Again, yellow wire, red wire, black wire. Just do yourself a favor and wire it all into the same harness. Wire all of this crap up together so that you don't have a bunch of stupid things trying to find power here, power there, accessory here, accessory there. That's wired it all in together. It's all one big massive crap now. So for that, you've got red, yellow, and black, right? And there's two blacks. Uh, one's a ground for the chassis, one's a ground for this guy right here. It doesn't matter which one you do which. It's not assigned to anything because as you can see, uh, it's two... It's DP in that bad boy. It's two plugs into one... <laughs> two wires into one hole. So, it doesn't matter which one, but make sure you capture both of them. So, one of them I ran, one of the black wires I ran into this uh, massive wires that come out of my main harness for my ground. I just wired it in there, wired the yellow in there, wired the red in there, and the black. The other black goes to your factory side of the harness, which is here. Now, this is the main harness that gets power to your radio. You will have to cut some of these wires. The wires you're going to have to cut are going to be, it'll, and it'll tell you, it's the, it's the wires that the, amp, the, the app tells you to cut. Um, it's going to be a white green wire a blue gray wire and a blue black wire and then you'll wire these wires into those the wiring diagram tells you the blue black wire gets the ground the blue gray wire gets the white black wire coming out of the interface and the white green wire gets the solid white wire coming out of this interface right here coming out of this guy and then, of course, your blue-yellow wire goes around and plugs into the back of the stereo. Unless you have a certain type of stereo that has an actual, like, style plug like that that it can go into. Um, if it does, then you won't need this blue-yellow wire. But if you don't have the ability to plug in, so these aren't, this is, it's not going to work on either one of these. But, uh, because it's Kenwood, so it just has the blue and yellow wire. 
So you wire that one wire into your blue and yellow wire, do the programming setup, boom, it's going to work, and you're good to go. It comes with a little fuse, a little 2 amp fuse on it so you don't burn the damn thing up. But it's not a bad little product. I think it was $30. So what I'm going to end up doing is, and the reason I left such a pigtail on it is, uh, I'm going to end up mounting it here on top of the radio so that if it ever goes bad or it loses its program i can just pop the air vents out right there and get right to it hit this smash this button to do the reprogram on it and i'll be good to go or if i have to replace this then i can just unplug unplug and replace i don't have to worry about chasing it down back here in the back of all of this crap right here um last thing was the sirius xm radio it's one plug there's the, this is the the plug right here, the, the, the unit right here, you just take your, there's a number on the back right there that you call Sirius XM and tell them that you want to swap your old radio identification number with this new one that it's got on the back of here and it'll, they'll, then they can program it and you'll have uh, satellite radio. Uh, for the meantime, I got this freaking cable running out here to my antenna, which is all temporary. Uh, but it was just for demonstration purposes that I got it in there. So what I'm going to do is I can't use that antenna wire for the XM radio. Uh, I mean, I could, but I have to splice it and all that garbage, and I don't want to do that. So for, I think it was $10, I got, uh, it's coming in the mail. It's a 20-foot extension cable for a Sirius satellite uh, antenna. It's got one male end, one female end. And... What you can do is you can put one end in there. Say so I already spliced this, and uh, yeah, whatever. But you can put one end in there. You run it all the way around up through here into the back and the head, uh, the headliner there, right about there underneath it. You got to pull. I uh, pulled a little plug back or the, the little square back there that says airbag side curtain airbag you pull that thing off There's a bolt back there take the bolt out that'll move a little bit and you can pull this down You can pull your weather stripping down like that you're uh, pull your OS handles out and you can pull the headliner down Same thing on the other side uh, And then right about there is a plug that goes to your satellite antenna So from there you can unplug it Plug in the new cable, run it around all the way back down here, bring it out here, and plug it into your new satellite receiver. And you can use your integrated antenna that's already on the car without having to stick another one of those dumb warts like that on your car. Uh, but that's basically it. I put it in the mounting bracket, and uh, now I'm just waiting for the dash mounting kit to come. Uh, because you can't remove this one and reuse it because the face of the stereo is integrated into the mounting kit and besides the holes wrong anyway it's a I don't know what the hell shape that is trapezoid I don't know what the, and this is a square or a rectangle so you can't really reuse it I bought a dash install kit for like 10 bucks and it comes with the brackets and everything you need uh, and also compatible with the digital um, climate controls so I'll pack everything back in the dash uh, I'm gonna run some more zip ties around some stuff and get it nice and organized push everything back in the dash and then hook it up and run through the, the, the stereo real quick uh, also this was that USB plug right here this goes like I said to the USB plug that's in your center console uh, they make a cable that you can plug into there and it plugs into the USB because this thing comes with that wire right there is an actual USB plug. Uh, there's the other end of it right there. Uh, so you can actually use that and retain that as well. Uh, but of course the, this thing has Bluetooth and all that other good stuff. And then you've actually got a USB plug running. So unless you want to get a splitter, plug that thing into it. That thing right there into it. And get a splitter and you can use both of them i guess but either way you probably won't need it uh this thing's got bluetooth it'll sync up with your phone and all that other good stuff so i use the factory mounting brackets for now but it's too far back so what i gotta do is pull these bolts out and slide these back a little bit to the next hole and then 
bolt it back in because it wasn't sitting far enough out. You'll see in the next part of the video, but uh, we'll get that squared away. Uh, but that's it for now. I'm going to fix this up and move to the next step. All right, last little piece I wanted to show you about wiring up your XM uh, satellite radio so that you don't have to have uh, the little antenna that comes with it. So what I did, if you can see, that's the little receiver box right there. And what I did was I bought that right there. It's a 20 foot extension, uh, Sirius XM radio antenna extension cable. Uh, I bought it from whatever that company was, XM Fan Store. That right there. But I'll put the part number and the link in the description. But uh, I just want to show you what you got to do is you plug it into your uh, receiver there. I just got the wire running out here right now because I haven't uh, tucked it in yet. But you want to bring it back to the trunk where your XM receiver is. The factory XM satellite radio receiver is here and here. And you'll have this pink plug. I'll climb in here real quick. Got getting old. So the pink plug plugs in right there. And unplug that and plug the one end of it into there. The let's see which one is that? That end. Come on, focus. Wow, that sucks. I'm gonna plug that end into this pink connector. And then plug the other end into your satellite XM satellite receiver um, that you got behind the dash. And that will retain your factory antenna on the roof so you won't have to put another antenna up there. Alright, that's it. Everything's in. Plugged in. Everything works. Um, I got the... Um, uh, all the steering wheel controls work. Uh, volume... Uh, it's got a DVD playing right now, but uh, the source button works, so it just it's going through the different um, different uh, inputs that it's got. I can plug up to my phone, Bluetooth audio. Uh, there's uh, audio, AV plugs in the rear of the radio. There's nothing plugged in right now. Um, what was that? Pandora, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Uh, standby and there's a regular terrestrial radio uh, and satellite radio uh, satellite radio right now I'm sitting in the garage with the garage closed so I don't get any reception on the satellite radio but it works uh, what I did is I ended up putting the receiver behind the dash uh, and just uh, plugging it in back there kind of uh, two-sided taped it inside there so it ain't rattling around uh, but the antenna cable extension, what I did was I ran it down, went through the floor here, back down there, ran it up, and then plugged it in there where the plug is for the um, factory antenna on the roof. So I didn't have to have another antenna on top of the car. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if I missed anything or if I was wrong on something, please comment and let me know. Uh, anything I needed to fix or do over, uh, let me know. Uh, but that's it. Uh, install of uh, Kenwood Double Den Radio. That's the um, model right there. DDX26BT. Um, all of the stuff that I used, all the interfaces I used, I'll put in the description. Uh, so hopefully this video helps some, somebody out because I know it sure would have helped me out <laughs> when I was trying to put this thing in. Thanks for watching.